Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing something really interesting from the world of batteries. With this image doing all of the talking, what you're looking at right here is the world's first biological photovoltaic cell that uses nothing but blue-green algae to power an actual microprocessor. Or in other words, it's a battery that uses photosynthesis, and it seems to work. And it seems to have worked for at least six months and is still going strong. With once again this picture right here doing all of the talking. And this is a huge groundbreaking discovery slash achievement. Because at least in theory, it can maybe help us solve a lot of different problems, including the problems with the overabundance of relatively expensive and relatively dangerous batteries that generally don't last very long. And so let's discuss this particular study you can find in the description below in a little bit more detail, and of course talk about the implications from the study as well. But I guess in this case, let's actually start with what this is not. Because I think it's important to understand the limitations of this technology. At the moment, this is not something that can actively replace a lot of lithium-ion batteries used in a lot of commercial products, and is not something that can easily replace the electric grid used across the planet. But it is something that can, in theory, quite easily power a lot of low-power devices. A lot of devices that are often used today for what's known as the Internet of Things. A variety of small electronic devices that usually connect to the Internet and interact with one another, often from very remote locations where there isn't really a lot of sources of power. With many of these devices today relying entirely on the solar panels, which generally cost a lot more and also often are produced using relatively dangerous chemicals. Making the use of solar panels a bit of a double-edged sword. But that's of course another story. The story here is, well, should we be using these to power millions or potentially one day billions of these devices that are quite actively becoming a part of daily life and are already used in so many different uh, industries and so many different environments. Being used everywhere from a typical road sign to a lot of different agricultural settings and of course in a typical modern kitchen. So this is something that's actively becoming a part of a normal life for us. But naturally all of these devices, apart from needing internet, also need energy. And powering so many of these devices is slowly becoming a bit of a problem. And so what if there was a way to avoid trashing our planet even more and to even find a way to maybe reduce the amount of CO2 in the air to some extent? In other words, what if we were to use photosynthesis to produce electricity? And that's kind of the main approach behind this paper. Here the scientists wanted to use nothing but light and water and obviously a little bit of algae present on the inside to try to create as much electricity as possible. In the process, creating something that's approximately the same size as a typical AA battery. And then using things like Raspberry Pi and a low power ARM chip, in this case known as ARM Cortex M0 Plus, the most widely used processor in Internet of Things devices, they tried to create something that would give it enough power to function for a long period of time. And the algae they decided to use is extremely well known. It's known as Cynocosystis. A cyanobacteria that's unicellular and usually lives in fresh water, that grows through so-called oxygenic photosynthesis during the light periods, and during nighttime it grows through glycolysis. With this particular algae being very interesting for several reasons. First of all, it's one of the model organisms for a lot of cyanobacteria that's already studied. Its genetics are very well known and it's used in a lot of different industries. And second of all, it also is able to somehow anticipate when the light or dark conditions are about to happen. So basically, it's very effective at photosynthesis. With this older video here showing us how this algae grows and how it turns into a bacterial film. So it's a very well known and very well studied algae. And in this case, the algae would reside in the water inside the transparent plastic pipe, with the filaments of aluminium serving as the anode, and the tiny electrical currents generated during photosynthesis turning into a kind of an electrochemical system that would then power the ARM microprocessor, which would then perform approximately 45 minutes of computations, followed by approximately 15 minutes of standby period. And since all of this was made out of relatively cheap and mostly recyclable materials, Overall, this discovery is quite groundbreaking. In theory, this could lead to a new shift in energy production on the planet, at least for these low-power devices. But also, let's discuss the specifics of the discovery. How much energy was produced and for how long? 
Well, even though the current itself wasn't really strong, approximately 1.4 microampere, the voltage here was about 0.72 volts. With the entire system producing a relatively similar output, both during the day and during nighttime. And also operating at temperatures between 13.8 and 30.7 degrees. With the system apparently only failing once, when the temperature was artificially lowered to approximately 5 degrees Celsius. So naturally it means that all of this can only operate in relatively warm conditions. But I guess more interestingly, it looks like all of this also worked during nighttime. In other words, unlike a typical solar panel, this operates and creates energy even when there is darkness everywhere. And at the moment the scientists are not entirely certain why this happens. But they think it's because algae is able to process some of its food even when there is no light, and this does create electric current, which then creates the current in the cell itself. And because in this case algae does not need any external food, it produces everything through photosynthesis, in theory the cell could operate for many years without needing anything really, being able to produce energy without any batteries or anything else needed in the process. And initially the two scientists who you see right here, Amory Ozer and Christopher Howey, thought that maybe all of this is going to stop after a few weeks. Turns out it didn't. It just kept going, and it's still going even now. And in this case, the scientists also believe that one of the reasons for this very long-term success is because they didn't really sterilize the environment and allowed some other bacterial species such as Halomonas and Pseudomonas to grow alongside the algae. And so by allowing the contamination of the water, they actually think that it created a kind of a resilient culture on the inside, with different bacterial and algal species working together to produce the living conditions, which in essence created a kind of a microbiome, while also allowing for a more effective electron transport and thus producing more constant energy. Although intriguingly enough, at the moment there is really no good explanation for how all of this works, only a hypothesis with the hypothesis suggesting that it's maybe some sort of a biophotovoltaic system with both electrochemical and bioelectrochemical modes that seem to operate differently depending on how much daylight is available. And so for example during bioelectrochemical mode the electrons could be directly transferred from the bacteria and from algae themselves, from their cell membrane. Whereas during the electrochemical mode the organisms here provide the environment for the electrochemical aluminium oxidation, which then provides electrons for all of the energy that's received. But the fact that all of this functioned for at least six months without changing anything on the inside is already quite remarkable. And this is just the first sample. I'm sure in months and years to come, they're going to improve their system and make it way, way more efficient than it currently is. And since today we expect up to about a trillion of these IoT devices on Earth within the next decade or so, this right here could be the solution to many of our problems. And possibly even the solution to some other energy shortages on the planet, especially when it comes to low power devices. So definitely a remarkable discovery and quite a remarkable paper that as always you can find in the description below. But I guess for now that's all we know. Thank you for watching. Once we know something else, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. So maybe subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.